What's up, guys? And welcome back to Planners and Wine. My name is Megan. And I am Myra. Welcome back to another week. Yes, it is another week. We are like halfway through January at the point that we're recording this. And yeah, time is just a figment of our imagination at this point. Because why does it go by so fast? I know it is really crazy. We're probably about just about what 12 days from seeing each other in Atlanta. I know, I know. That's insane. Yes, shout out to D and the whole team over at Planner Memory Social. We will be there um, in Atlanta at the end of the month. And I am so excited. Um, yeah, this is our first like like uh Harry Potter type of conference. <laughs> it's gonna be so fun. We're so fun. It is. And I love it's mixed in with planning. It's like two mm-hmm. things that we absolutely love. Yes. Yeah. So if y'all are going to be there, definitely let us know. Say hi if y'all see us. And we're super, super excited mm-hmm. to hang out in Atlanta. Can't wait. I can't wait. I'm ready to eat some food. Same. And I really want to go to the movies. We got to go see the movie, Megan um because in I don't have honor. anybody here in my honor exactly <laughs> um because I have no one here within close proximity to me that I can see it with and neither do you so yeah there's that yeah I yeah you know what Dallas and Chuck could have took one for the team but you know you know that would be asking too much I guess yeah clearly anyway <laughs> anyway <laughs> but yeah, you want to know something weird it's why did everybody it seems like everybody in the world discovered at the exact same time that the price of eggs was out of control like did the price of eggs just go up this week or did everybody literally just discover it this week because our friend Laura said something about it and then literally all I've been seeing since then are TikToks with people commenting on the price of eggs after she said something about it what happened Hmm, I don't know I noticed it a few weeks ago Ours is like nine bucks. The ones that we usually get, um, which is like, you know, free ring, brown color eggs. So I had to go down to the Kroger brand. That still was like $6. Yeah, the ones we get are like seven now and it's like an 18 count. So, I mean, at least we were getting a little bit more bang for our buck, but still just makes no sense. So I'm just curious to like, what happened with the price of eggs? And I I'm keep confused. Seeing- Why I know. is it seven? you're only like a it's only a state between us like why is the price so vastly different um I don't like know our my... cost of living usually is about the same yeah but we're not getting like brown eggs like the brown free range oh eggs. yeah so that is like because yeah, ours was 18 count that too. I'm thinking mm-hmm. oh, okay yeah. okay so we so don't even the bougie eggs here. and they still cost too much um and I've been seeing all these memes of like chickens <laughs> Chickens being all bougie and stuff now because that was the egg sauce and it's been killing me. So funny. Oh uh, yeah, a lot of of uh, like egg cartel TikToks too, which has mm-hmm. been funny. But mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. yeah, I just think that's the era that we're in right now. Um, it sucks, but I try not to like dwell on it too much. It it does suck because it's like yeah, my pay isn't going up like Girl. the price of eggs girl don't even get me started on that's the company try to act so cheap and it's like our expenses are going up so i mean if your expenses are going up and you're the company i work for i'm sorry that's a personal problem i still need my money expeditiously (laughs) oh that's the reason to leave if they Mm -hmm. ask because eggs are nine dollars and y'all talking about a 10 cent an hour raise get out of here (laughs) play with somebody else for real (laughs) play with somebody else but anyway anyway let's uh let's delve into planner world so um we did ask our patrons um shout out to the patrons if there was anything they wanted us to talk about on the show this week um they are always so helpful when it comes to that one thing they wanted us to talk about is how our 2023 planners are working for us so far so myra let's talk about what is your 2023 planner lineup and how is it working for you uh, two to three weeks into the year? Does it count if I switch from a weeks to Omegas? No, it's still okay. a planner. So yeah, it's working out fine for me. Um, I've been using that and my half letter. I've honestly been more in my weeks, which is a shocker just based off the sides alone. 
but it's just so portable and it's attached to my wallet so I can just take it with me everywhere. So I've been in that mainly. And of course, Notion. This is wild to me because I feel like I literally only have two planners. I love it. Which is insane. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Who are we? I know. We are like, <laughs> seriously, we are not two planner gals. At least we didn't used to be, but now we are. So uh, yeah, I'm loving my planner uh, lineup so far. I am also in the Hobonichi Weeks. It is absolutely my favorite planner um, right now. It's just so cute and it's so portable. And I've been finding so many cute like kits and stuff that I can use with it. So I am absolutely loving, loving, loving this planner. Carrying it around in my uh, Notique. So it just makes me happy aesthetically as well as being extremely functional and fun. It's just checking all the boxes. Uh, and then I am still in my uh, seven by nine um, EC life planner uh, hourly. I didn't use it this week only because I was sick. And y'all know I had to be sick sick to not set up my planner and have my kit and all that set up. Like I didn't even work. I just couldn't do it. But I still found a way to get into my week's but I just couldn't with my seven by nine this past week, but I am probably going to mm-hmm. back, back plan because I have a million kids. So I'm still just probably going to back plan for this past week and then plan ahead for uh the next week. And those are the only two planners that I'm using and I'm absolutely loving them. So, yeah. 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 I mean, those are the only ones I'm using too. I've been doing a few spreads in the daily duo just to, you know, have some fun with some stickers and stuff, but I've been thinking about pulling out that, uh, cousins too Mm. just to put some stickers in it yeah yeah just to play around with it but yeah you know maybe we just in our um our minimalist era you know maybe (laughs) which uh, clearly we put stickers on our stuff we not minimalist but um, right i i mean i could remember having seven planners in my lineup girl girl yeah for like, what? In saying I got seven planners like with my chest. And it's like, girl, what Whole are you chest. doing? What are you doing? Yeah. And if that's you, it's cool. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not me. And it never worked. Even when I had it and I was super pumped about it, it never quite worked for me because there was just no way physically I had the time or mm-hmm. wanted to put in the effort to have that many planners. But I was doing it anyway, just because that's what other people were doing. And it never quite worked. So yeah, I am way happier now. And I have way better planner piece now that I'm just kind of sticking to what I know and not really getting too distracted when I see other people using other planners, like really thinking critically about would that work for me and not just like instantly pulling the trigger. Like something that's been working mm-hmm. for me is having it in my cart, letting it sit there and then in a day or two, if I still want it, I'll get it. But in if a day or two, if I'm barely thinking about it, then I'm not going to get it. And that has been veering me away from doing, for making a lot of planner purchases, honestly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I have kind of accepted the fact that I can have something that is just for fun, just to try out and see if I like it. And it just be just for fun. Like at the end of the day, it's, it's still a hobby. So um, you don't have to have a reason for every single thing, but it's, it's sure. balance because you don't want to just be buying shit just to be buying shit either. Yeah. So, you know, balance. Balance. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then also kind of figuring out that I don't actually need a planner per se for every different aspect of my life. Like for work, I'm not actually using a planner. I'm just using a notebook. And it's been working very, very well for me um, for work. So I don't know. Before you before you start, you know, buying up everything, all the planners saying, I need a planner for this, I need a planner for that. Like, review that portion of your life and, like, figure out, like, do you really need a planner for that? Or is it something that you could just use a notebook for, notebook for or some type of digital product for? Does that actually have to be a paper planner? So, you know, Facts. just something to think yeah. about. Yeah, I don't like my job enough to uh, get a good planner for <laughs> So this definitely would be a target notebook period period, <laughs> period. there we go there we go <laughs> and I I do like my job enough but that's why I got a plum paper notebook because I still wanted like a fancy ish you know notebook that I could put my name on the cover and pick out a cute cover for or whatever but uh yeah it just kind of depends on what you need um and what you're gonna use it for so don't just rush out thinking you got to get a planner for everything like maybe you don't actually need a planner for that something to think about oh yeah I, I know we can move on. I know what you were thinking <laughs> I know what you were thinking 
Um, I don't think people can uh, trademark phrases that we just use in conversation, thankfully, but <laughs> we can just keep going. <laughs> Okay, so what was going on with the uh, the the Coffee Monster Co. subscription? Girl, we were first, sad. Let's let's just start off by saying shout out to Helen and the team over at the Coffee Monsters yeah. Co. They uh, they had a you know situation that was beyond their control when it came to the sub boxes, and I really think that they handle it in the best um, way possible. And I hope people are able to recognize that and you know stop crying um and kind of chill you know because issues and things like that happen and you know you know I I love the phrase first world problems Mm -hmm. because having an issue with the sub box like if that's your biggest problem that you weren't able to get subscribed to the sub box that you wanted in the exact moment that you wanted it then I think your life is pretty good and you should probably reflect on that you know (laughs) your biggest problem was you weren't able to spend money on non-necessity on non-necessity because <laughs> let's be clear these are yeah, not we like it yeah essential it, to live not, yeah you know what i'm saying it's not food it's not housing it's not medicine and it's not to say that if your problems aren't that big that they aren't important but you need to keep them in perspective also you know yeah. what i'm saying mm-hmm. so i say how to sure. say uh the coffee monsters co sub box um was supposed to open this past week there was a huge some type of computer itch on a uh, glitch on their system to where only like a handful of people were able to get uh subscribed to the sub box and me and myra and you know julie a lot of other people who were trying to get um signed up to the sub box were not able to mm-hmm. on that day um but we were able to a couple of days later it was fine and it was fine it was fine I love the way she um resolved that because now in this case like it's not a like a race for all since that that issue happened she allowed it to where it could be like a pre-order so basically everybody you're not rushing you're not losing out on anything if you don't sign up as soon as the thing came available um so everybody got their stuff and then for the next quarter um I think those open up on the 16th. Yes. I'm not mistaken. Okay. For quarter two. But then yeah. you literally have from January 16th all the way until they get ready to ship in like April. Mm-hmm. In so order it's still to no it. rush. So it's still no rush. So yeah, if you're hearing this, obviously after the 16th, you still have every opportunity to go to the Coffee Monsters Co. website and get signed up for the uh, next quarter's um, subscription. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and I, I appreciate it that Helen was extremely transparent, um, extremely apologetic about the situation, even though it was not her fault. She still, you know, owned it um, and took you know, and the knowledge that people were going to be upset about it and people were upset about it. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's fine. I just, I don't know. I feel like everything just seems, especially in the moment, things seems like such a much a bigger deal than what they actually are. And I get that. I've definitely been there, but like I said, I think it's just a lesson on perspective and, you know, not, always having to blame somebody because I feel like in naturally in situations like this where something goes on people are like okay I'm gonna blame the shop I'm gonna blame the shop owner I'm gonna blame this person I'm gonna blame that person sometimes there's nobody at fault sometimes it's yeah, nobody's shit fault. just happens yeah shit just happens and you just have mm-hmm. to accept it like even if everything went well and you just did not get the sub box yeah it would be a bummer like I've been there um before and missed out on the sub box I really wanted but I you ain't got a bitch about it on Facebook. I feel like people like that echo chamber of like going and being like, this is a horrible experience. And then, yeah, I agree. This is a horrible experience. And it's like, is that really necessary? Is that it? You just gonna have to check in the next go around. And in this situation, clearly it was a glitch. Nobody's fault. Mm-hmm. Just chill. Just, just chill. chill. Just chill. And also, with that in mind, people, there were people who were being judgmental towards people who were turning this into a very big deal and who were very upset about it. People who don't have yeah. room to judge either. So well, everybody should just chill. 
You know what I'm saying? Because, like, obviously, I noticed that there were people in, like, in her Facebook group who were just really going off about it, really upset mm-hmm. about it. As ridiculous as that was to me, I still didn't feel the need to, like, go on my stories and, like, call those people out or, like, bully them or anything like that for them being upset. Like, they're upset, they're upset, their feelings are valid, you know, whether I think they are or not. Like, I'm not the end all be all. So, f- people need to acknowledge that as well. That people can feel however they want to feel. If this was their biggest problem of the week, then this is their biggest problem of the week. It's not for you to judge them either. You can also just leave the Facebook group if it bothers you that much. You can. Mm -hmm. I think some people just like having people to dump on, to be honest. That that I couldn't put the word, see, Mm -hmm. this is why you're here. I couldn't figure out what words I wanted to say with that, but that's perfectly said. Yeah, it's like, and that says more about you than it does about the people that are complaining on the Facebook group that you will, you know, go the extra step to dump on them. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I see. That's that's a you problem. Yes, unnecessary. Yeah, all of it. You can all see of that it. And be like, this is crazy, and keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Who we'll plan a world? Everybody just needs to log off sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it is great. Logging off mm-hmm. is great. You get a little bit of clarity. You don't have that echo chamber. Mm-hmm. It, it's great. It's peaceful. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. you get to visit family, talk to them about stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, EC has some of the releases. They released their Zodiac collection. Um, it's basically um, a cover that you can put on the planner or a notebook for every um sign of the zodiac. I personally really like the Aquarius one. Um, I have not purchased it yet. I don't know if I am gonna purchase it honestly. Because honestly, I can bring this up. I don't like that the last time I made a purchase from EC, it was only covers. I think I got like two covers, and I still had to pay like eight dollars in shipping. And there's no way the covers really cost that much to ship. They're just in a mailer, and they was the only pe- thing in my package. So I can't. Did they send a box? No, it was in a mailer, oh. like a little flat mailer mm. that you could literally put a stamp on, which is what they did, or whatever. <laughs> So yeah, I'm annoyed. So I can't make a purchase from EC and only get covers because I'm going to pay way too much for shipping unnecessarily. Uh, So yeah, I got to figure out something else to buy or I'm just going to wait until they have like a life plan or release or something. (laughs) Something bigger that I can buy more stuff with because yeah, it's just ridiculous. But I do really like the covers though. Um, I'm not a fan of the Gemini one. Um, I just don't like birds. It's, Mm -hmm. It's a personal thing. Me and birds we ain't cool i don't like birds Um, either why are they i mean i get why they're here but you know why they're kind of just mm, they just i don't trust them i think think that's what it is yeah it's pigeons in particular um and i found out that doves are basically pigeons too remember we had that whole thing on the podcast yeah Mm -hmm. only pigeon i like is um brewster honestly the rooster <laughs> <Shout out to laughs> <Animal Crossing. laughs> honestly the only animals that i just really like are like dogs because that's the only animal that i kind of think i can like they trust loyal. yeah present. like even cats like even though tiktok is truly trying to turn me into a cat person i just don't trust them i don't know i don't know if you're a cat lover it's fine you know you don't have to like tell me how awesome cats are i believe <laughs> you i believe you trust me but i don't know it's just something i just have a little bit of distrust for them but yeah yeah i agree i tumbled down this random tiktok rabbit hole of like cat rescuers and they find these kittens and the kittens is spicy as hell like they hissing at people i've seen them uh -uh. i've seen them dogs don't do that Uh uh-uh puppies don't puppies don't do all that (laughs) they instantly like you like that one kitten was like literally refused to eat like i'm giving you food cat and you hissing at me. Somebody called it a murder kitten. They call them murder kittens. And but you know, some people think they're Why very y'all cute. Like them? They're cute. They are very cute, but no. They cute. But no, I don't if you gonna hiss at me, like let's square up then. Period. I'm trying to feed you. I'm scared. Like you're not finna scare me in my own house. It's day house now. That's it what is. they think. Cause I'm gonna it's move out. House. Cause I'm gonna move. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanna find a kitten so bad, but I wanna find a nice one. 
girl's gonna hiss at you mm, that's gonna break my heart too I don't know why are they so spicy I don't know it's feral. it has to be a reason it it's has feral. to be a reason. yeah like if they've always been outside they've never been around humans they don't know anything about humans they're just naturally not trusting which I don't blame them because yeah you know, true humans be trash but <laughs> humans be trash facts you know what they write they write humans do right. be trash humans do be trash yep yep but yeah, uh, Myra said all that to say that her cover has birds on it. And she's not happy. I put her on that yeah. huge tangent. Sorry, y'all. But yeah, uh, check out the Zodiac Collection. Uh, there was like some confusion about when it was coming out and when people could talk about it. Because it was actually out last week when we recorded, but we weren't sure if we could share about it. But it's out out now, so... Yeah, uh, I just see the Black History Month stuff is out too. Okay, awesome, awesome. Do you have the names of the artists by any chance? Because I mean, they just kind of, kind of sneaking this stuff out, and we have no idea when it's coming. Because I um, wasn't sure we could talk about that either. I just seen somebody share it on Facebook, so no, I don't have that. Okay. Do we need to ask our editor? uh oh yeah guys we have a, <laughs> a, a, a amazing new pod editor our our boo jonathan jonathan flores government name howdy oh my god um i'm looking <laughs> it up right now <laughs> thank you jb <laughs> so like, hold momentarily yeah i seen someone had posted it on their facebook so i'm like i guess it's okay to talk about it now if not facebook on instagram um so i'm like okay yeah. i thought we weren't supposed to talk about it to the end of the month i i have thoughts about that we talked about it we'll, yeah. we'll just keep like that yeah yeah we, we there needs to be some type of yeah that's not cool and yeah it, is this the date? Is this not the date? Yeah, I don't know what's been going on with that. Hopefully they're working on it. I'm sure they're working on that behind the scenes, trying to figure all that out to make sure people are on the same page and that they have the correct dates for stuff. It looks like they were designed by Maritza Lisa and Lo Harris, just for the names. Nice. Ooh, shout out to them. Yeah, And they are cute. They are really cute. The ones that mm -hmm. I see on um, Instagram are super cute um super versatile mm -hmm. okay link Period. so yeah yeah these are these are gorgeous and i think everybody can um use these covers absolutely oh, and they have the bags and stuff too oh nice like the uh, tote bags oh yeah i love those awesome. yeah these are cute i'm yeah. very excited about this and i love that that is uh something that they are continuing to do having these artist collaborations because they are very important and these artists absolutely deserve um to get their shine on and to get all the the praise that they deserve absolutely yeah um, and it is on their give back stuff too so there nice. is a portion of the proceeds that will be donated as well okay love it love it perfect Oh yeah, these um, are so cute. Yeah, definitely check those out. So I don't know, I might have enough. Maybe I'll have enough covers to blow out five for a free shipping. Now that these are out as well, but uh, I'll keep y'all posted. <laughs> that sucks though. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I yeah, I would be kind of triggered too to spend eight dollars in shipping and it's in a bubble mailer. Girl literally give me a box then give if me I a box then much, yeah. yeah there should be some type of kickback or like a hey you overpaid in shipping so we're gonna give you your money back i feel like um small shops do that all the time yeah so but yeah love 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 uh these collections super excited about them um also so no teak has their i believe it's a quarterly subscription and they have featured some new items um on their instagram page that are going to be i'm assuming in the upcoming quarterly subscription one was like a carry-on size suitcase and the Gorgeous other was like too. this like really beautiful black and like camel colored like bag so cute so super cute. super cute yeah, no TV coming out with some good stuff. I uh -huh. am curious when we gonna get some more covers too, though. 
I need some more weeks, some more uh, Hogenichi week size covers. Like the, their wallet size. Yeah, things. it's yeah. the slim wallet if anybody's interested because mm-hmm. they do have a few on their website, but I need some new colors because, you know, Hogenichi week stands. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm sure they come in, but that suitcase was super cute. It's so chic. It is. Everything LT does is so chic. Chic and affordable. I love it. Chic and affordable. And it just makes me kind of wish I was one of those people who had my life together that could like go on a trip and like have all my stuff in a carry-on bag and didn't have to like check a bag. I wish I was that person. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to be that person though. You're not, you checking a bag for the trip at the end of the month? I mean, Southwest, you get free check bags. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. (laughs) you know because so, it's like there's no there's no reason for me not to have a check bag why I should i stuff it? all my stuff in a way too small bag that i that i need if i don't really have to that's kind of my thought process but it is nice like having all your stuff with you and not having to worry about mm-hmm. it potentially getting lost or damaged or anything stolen but i just don't think i'm that mm-hmm. girl i don't think i can get all my stuff in one bag yeah um I think honestly, I know I'm doing Southwest at the end of the month, but I was thinking about keeping everything with me so I don't have to worry about check bags. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we will see. But yeah, I just wish I was one of those people. J Bay, I feel like you could be one of those people who could like fit all your stuff in one bag and not have to check it. Have you ever done that before? Um, I actually have a lot of anxiety about checking my bag mm. <laughs> or not, um, or like bringing it on the plane. I feel like we've been so frugal the last time we've flown that like, we never get the chance to put an end of overhead. They're always like, gotta check it. So we, <gasps> we just check. <laughs> Period. I hate Period. that too. Mm-hmm. I hate Don't that. Don't tell me there's the space if there's not. <laughs> yeah. Why like, you know how many games? people are going to be on there. Right. Yeah. But right. you know, sometimes planes do oversell their tickets. That's true. That's true. And some people be sneaking in bags that they should not be checking mm-hmm. that are too big. So, mm. but anyway. yeah. Anyway. Shout out to Southwest for those two free check bags. I too. know. And I already know people <laughs> gonna be like, eh, Southwest did all that stuff over the holidays and they messed up. Look, the holidays are past. Okay. Stop living in the past. We're focused on the future. And we are hoping for the best. And Southwest is still one of the least expensive airlines. So y'all gonna go on out somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's also part of the reason why I'm like, maybe I should keep everything with me. Just in case Just it in is up like in Alaska <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> that whole situation was wild. I feel for the people who got caught up in that. Like, yeah, I mm-hmm. totally valid. I, I can get why people are a little bit weary about it. And they know it. That's why the tickets are on sale right now. Period. Girl, Southwest love a sale too. They do love a sale. They do love a sale. <laughs> like, I think I got both my ticket to Atlanta and my ticket to DC, both round trip, no layovers or anything. I think it was like $300 total for two tickets, which is wild. That is kind of crazy. Which is wild. Yes. I don't know why Southwest tends to be expensive for me. Really? I think it's just the where you're coming from, possibly. Yeah, I'm probably yeah. not a, you know, a mm-hmm. normal stop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to being it. in Ohio. Girl, why? Okay. Speaking of Ohio, TikTok be dragging Ohio. Have you noticed? Yeah, I'd be uh, hitting not interested because <laughs> I don't want to feel bad. <laughs> why does TikTok do like anything? Like, it'll be like something to come up and it'll be like a murder case or something. And I'll go like on TikTok and I'll go to the comments and uh, people will be like, of course this happened in Ohio. They'll be like, just going off. Like, does everything bad happen in Ohio? Apparently I thought it was Florida. I thought Florida was the bad place. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, we, we, we definitely uh, have some serial killers in our history for sure. But uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know why it's just, maybe it's because of where we are. It's just like, we don't have like a hub. So if I'm not going to a major city, I have to do a layover. It's, just, yeah. it's a weird state. It's, so weird. it's a weird state. But yeah, speaking I, of Florida. I can't I mean guess, to ask you about that. Go ahead. I'll have, yeah, I totally haven't seen it. I feel like I get it more because I'm in Ohio. But <laughs> but yeah, I see somebody share that um, there's like lower temperatures in Florida right now and a watch out for fallen iguanas. 
And I said, Mm-mm. okay, Mm-mm. I'm okay with being in Ohio because fuck mm-hmm. no, I'm just not about to be walking down the street and a iguana falls on my head. That is wild. Like literally falling from like a tree or something. Yes. Cause they mm-hmm. freeze over. Wow. I did see a video, a TikTok the other day where there was an iguana in a pool and this pool guy was like, it, it was like a humongous iguana too. And this pool guy was trying to get it out. And of course it was in Florida. So. Mm-mm. Yeah, y'all can keep that in the gators. I, keep I'll it. be up here with the, the serial killers. I take my chance. <laughs> yeah, Florida is like a, like a baby Australia when it comes to like the, the yeah. creatures and stuff. Because mm-hmm. apparently Australia has a problem where like, frogs will get up in your toilet and it'll be like i saw a video where it was like 30 frogs in somebody's toilet and i'm like there's nothing that could put me into a a a a coma quicker than raising up my (laughs) toilet seat and seeing a bunch of frogs like i will pass out and not wake up yeah yeah what australia is a wild place as a southerner though do you consider florida the south Mm-mm. okay i've been seeing that too like southerners no. don't count florida as a south like it's something totally different low-key texas is kind of not the south either they said that like too. i never yeah. considered texas the south yeah. either um growing up the south to me is like bible belt you know like yeah. georgia mm-hmm. alabama tennessee arkansas like those are like mississippi those are like the south south to me okay okay Hmm. yeah i see that they they don't count texas or florida it's like yeah. florida is the south is of the south <laughs> but you know what when i would count texas and florida as the south I, yeah i've been watching too much tiktok clearly recently there was a tiktok and it was saying like if the united states was divided into like four parts and all the parts like like went at each other like what part will win and the guy the tiktok i found the guy made a very strong argument for why the South would win. And Texas and Florida were a, a good part of that argument. And I was like, yeah, that's true. Like uh Texas and Florida, they they got the they got the craziest people. So we have a good uh good advantage. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Don't get on no ideas. I'm just saying, I know I don't want it to happen because I don't trust them. I don't want to I will be stuck here with them. I'm gonna have to migrate. <laughs> no hate to any state okay we're just talking we're just talking um yeah i mean you lived in some of these states so i have no shade. Yeah. i can talk about texas because i lived there for <laughs> a good part of my life yep poor J bay he's still there um <laughs> <laughs> but anyway there has been a lot of drama and stuff going on with this tpc nation business on Facebook. I know a lot of y'all have seen it. And if you have not seen it, y'all are just gonna have to wait for our January bonus episode because I'm gonna be honest, I don't even have a strong enough understanding of the situation at this point to talk about it with any sort of confidence. Yeah. Um and obviously we don't want to like publicly be like you know making allegations because obviously things as far as like theft and stuff are possibly involved so we're just gonna wait until we have a deeper understanding of this and save it for our january bonus episode so right now it's a great time to join the patreon if you want to get all the deets on that but if not you can do your own research it's all over facebook and youtube so yeah that's true i mean that's what we basically been doing Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. collecting and putting the puzzles together but yeah um y'all know how we do we don't really like to like name specific shop names and uh Mm -mm. specific people and we just truly it's still up in the air for us Mm -hmm. to even confidently talk about it so yeah we're just gonna wait patreon yeah Yeah. and on that note we are going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsors and we will be right back All right, guys. So we are back. Woo, y'all. The things that have been going down in the royal sphere, I don't even know what to call it this past week, have been wild. Um, Prince Harry's book, Spare, officially is out. Um, He went on a press tour where he did some interviews for Spare. Uh, I have started uh, listening to Spare via an audiobook with him narrating it. And let me just say, 
a lot of things had kind of leaked. Um, you know, the media was able to get their hands on the book before it officially came out. And a lot of headlines from the book had leaked out. And putting them into context in the book has made them way less sensational than what they actually sound like within the confines of the book. So, you know, before anybody rushes to judgment um, based off of anything that you've seen leak out in the headline, I truly, truly do advise people who are interested to give the book a chance um, because a lot of the things that have made headlines were within the first 50 pages of the book and hearing them in the book, they have just really kind of been no big deal, which was... Um, refreshing to me because I was quite shocked as well with some of the headlines that I had read but once I was able to hear it in the book it's been way different and I'm really enjoying it it's, it's been really awesome like hearing his words um in his voice and in the proper context that he meant it to be in so yeah y'all know I'm team Harry Megan all the way don't matter yeah um I'm I'm not surprised about what you're saying either because you know media they're gonna try to like make it seem way more mm-hmm. than what it truly is mm-hmm. um so how far are you in the book how, how are you liking it so far I love it so far I am about because it's a long book don't get me wrong it's a long book I want to say I'm about maybe a third of the way through or maybe a fourth of the way mm-hmm. through so I'm still kind of in the beginning stages of it um but yeah I, I really love it like I'm on chapter 21 but there are okay. like so many chapters of this book. There are so many parts of this book. So actually, I don't even know if I'm a third of the way through. <laughs> I'm like pretty early into it still. Um, but a lot of the chapters are very, very quick. Uh, maybe like a two minutes okay. or something like that. Um, but yeah, I love it. I love it. I, I like having a lot more like context and information about him. Um, a lot of feelings about his upbringing and his you know, reaction to everything surrounding his mother's passing, which has just been devastating to Mm -hmm. listen to. Like, even like the next morning after his mother passed away, I I believe she passed away on a Saturday night. The next Sunday morning, his dad still got him and his brother up to go to church like normal. Um, There was no like Mm -hmm. downtime or, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you still had to be on yeah and that's how they were and like he even talks about like um you know when they returned to like Buckingham Palace and stuff in the days following his mother's death like leading up to her funeral and stuff like how they were having to greet people shake people's hands console people um because they were public figures and they had the expectation of presenting themselves uh as public figures even as children like Harry was only 12 years old when his mother passed away and so yikes uh uh, it's just it's so bad it's so bad like the whole setup like I've never been like a royalist or really um a fan of the institution or felt like the institution made any type of sense to me to still be upholding in 2023 um but hearing how it affected his childhood and things like that and uh it's just it's just too much it's just too much but it's it's a really really good book and like I said hearing it in his voice has made a huge huge difference I believe as well so mm. yeah I love that it is crazy to like think about mm-hmm. like I mean probably t- up until he ha- was I mean well, shit, has he had a chance to truly grieve his mother? I think you know what recently. I mean? Because I, yeah, yeah, that's on like up until adulthood, but even still, he still was in the institution and still had mm-hmm. obligations and stuff up until what, like three years ago at this point, mm-hmm. three, four years ago. Like, how do you, how do you grieve somebody and have yeah. to worried about shaking people's hands and shit instead of having to put on a face exactly and present yourself in a way exactly and it's like something a a criticism that i've heard of like prince harry and megan which one podcast i literally even stopped listening to it because i just thought the criticism was just so wrong and so tone deaf and just so non-empathetic was that oh you know i get you know everybody has family problems like but why is he putting this all out there i would never do this to my family and da 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 Look, the the secrecy that surrounds families and these traumatic things that go on within families are a part are a part of the problem. Okay, so it's just like a normal person who is not a, a super famous person 
probably would just, you know, talk to a therapist, talk to their friends about it, try to talk to their family about it. He's not a normal person in a normal situation. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I even, I appreciate like, even at the beginning of the book, um, he totally addressed that because he was like, it, he had a meeting with his dad and his brother a couple years ago and they literally told him like they didn't understand why him and Megan left. And he basically said that this book is his explanation to them for why he had to leave and why he had to take his family with him pretty much. Um, and I feel like sometimes everybody's anybody who has a complicated situation with their family should know that a lot of times people don't listen and they don't want to address things um in a in a very upfront way and I think his family um is no different and unfortunately for him his family has already done so much talking to him through the press he's talking but he's not even trying to talk to them through the press he's talking to them through his own words and his own voice to make sure they have max understanding of why he did the things that he does so I don't even think he's coming at this from like an angry place I don't think he's angry at them anymore I think he's just from more of a a healing place and also Mm -hmm. him and Megan have every right to try to make money people have made millions of dollars off them why can't they make money off of themselves and their own story you don't want them living off taxpayer money, but you don't want them earning their, their own money. What is he supposed to do? Go work at Trader Joe's? He's freaking Prince Harry. <laughs> this is literally what they have to do. Yeah. Again, like you said, they're, they aren't normal people. No. They can't just go to Walmart or Target and get a job yeah. and like work like that. These aren't, they aren't normal people. So holding them to normal standards makes no sense because of course I'm yeah. not going to go write a, a, or go to the press to talk about my family because the press doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. About yeah. me and my family. <laughs> yeah. But they care, they do care a lot about them. And it's very well documented how much they care about them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just feel like w- when you're talking about Harry and Megan, like you have to have some empathy and you have to have some new ones. Like you can't just look at this as like a black and white situation. And I'm just not really open to hearing people talk about it. Like it's like it's just so it's just so obvious that they're handling this the wrong way or they're just it's self-serving, they're doing this for them. All this BS, like have some empathy to 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 the things that they have gone through you know what i'm saying so i don't know but i like i love them you know how i feel about them i love them so yeah it's always so odd to me that people are like upset that they're trying to make money as if we all don't fucking need money to live you know right right the same people who don't want them to live off taxpayer money which is what they were doing as royals so what are they supposed to do yeah. I mean, I, they pay like $4 million a year for security alone. Because th- didn't that get taken away from them? Yes. Which he's fucking Prince Harry. He needs security. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Like clearly don't everybody like him. Right. He needs security to exactly. protect his family. Like I, let's be exactly. for real. Now, what I can say, and some fair criticism that I have heard when it comes to Prince Harry and Meghan, is that you can't, people think they're kind of trying to toe the line between um, speaking out against the institution and the things that are wrong about the institution without going all in, without fully trying to dismantle the institution and the royal family which because that's his family i get why he doesn't want to go that far Mm -hmm. but i i i I don't think that that is um unfair criticism um at all but you know it's easy for me to say i didn't grow up in that i didn't grow up having any type of reverence to that as an american um and i do think it needs to end (laughs) because of its you know ties to racism and imperialism and all those things but you know maybe he'll get yeah. there maybe he'll, he's a he, you know people are a work in progress he's obviously done a lot of growing she's done a lot of growing as well so maybe they'll get there but they just aren't there yet so yeah i i could see that as a criticism i just i can't expect somebody to dismantle their own family literally is what it would be yeah yeah so i mean yeah. again we we have to you know we're we're thinking from our aspect of it like we our family won't be affected by that being dismantled uh-uh. like these are the people that he lived with he'd been raised with like this is his family like you uh-huh. can't just expect them to be like completely fuck them basically right I, right exactly that's, I, 
anybody that's really hard to do and we mm-hmm. you know we talk about you know cutting people off and stuff but at the end of the day this is still your family you still care about them maybe you mm-hmm. don't have any contact with them or you yeah. know you're not talking to them right now but to completely like dismantle them and blow up their spot like it that's hard exactly. for anybody to do like it's exactly. still your family. yeah and I think that Harry is being very careful with his words and what he is trying to say when it comes to them even now I even heard that like the royal family they were um preparing for him to say a lot worse things in the book so that means that there are a lot worse things that could be said about them and he hasn't so he's still kind of protecting them in a way and that's his family and I think maybe from his perspective he has felt like his family should be number one and from their perspective the institution is number one and the family Mm -hmm. is after that you know which is it's weird I just couldn't imagine putting anything before my family but I mean I'm also not in like a you know a thousand year old (laughs) institution that is literally yeah. my bread and butter and has always been there. I feel like I'm clear. I clearly it means a lot to them, even if it don't make sense to us. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I just think people should, should read it. And if you're going to read it, go into it with a open mind and don't be so quick to judge. I think, I think everybody's lacking a little bit of empathy when it comes to this situation, but a lot of situations just in general, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. A lot of people are like putting themselves in their shoes and it's like you would you would never be in their shoes so you, you kind of have to Mm-mm. put this at a different no in a different light because yeah this would never be your life this would this never, never be, be anybody you know life so say that to the women who still think that if it wasn't Megan it was gonna be them because girl get a grip get a grip like <laughs> be be for real it was never gonna be you 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 live in bumfuck Kentucky it was, it was never, never gonna, gonna be, be you. you yeah I I just can't. <laughs> no shade to the Kentucky is, but you know, it just be people in middle America, like really up on a TikTok going it's off. It's never gonna be any of us, any of us. So Megan had a whole life outside of that, a whole yeah. famous ass life outside mm-hmm. of that. So yeah. it yeah. it just was not gonna be you, girl. It was not gonna be you, girl. So stay mad. You can stay mad, but it's truly a waste of time. Um, but yeah, I'm liking the book so far. I'm liking it a lot. Uh, so Tabitha Brown has a collaboration with Target. Myra, did you get a chance to try some of her vegan snacks? I did. This is like her third one. Uh, first of all, oh, shout yeah. out to my bae Target. For continuing different things with her. I know she had a lot of clothes. Like, if that stuff be selling out, I, oh, I'd be so happy. You know what? That's what I was only familiar with before. Did Had she had food <laughs> before or was it just clothes she, and other stuff? This is the first time she had actual food. So she had like uh, clothes and like different accessory, like home decor. Mm. Um, but this is the first time with food and I'm, I'm here for it. I had the, uh, I think it's sweet maybe sweet and salty popcorn Mm -hmm. um salt and vinegar cashews which I'm a salt and vinegar girl I know everybody isn't like that but um those were good I had okra for the first time and only tab could get me to eat something like that because I I guess I'm not southern enough because when I was like oh okra y'all were like this is normal the fuck you talking about (laughs) did you like it I did I did she has different flavors of it I did the like pickled garlic Mm. one and that was really good Mm. different interesting but it was good um nice and she had a few like barbecue vegan burgers that we tried and those were good um so yeah oh and the strawberry like you know vegan cream cheese spread Mm. very very good. good yeah yeah so if y'all can get your hands on it, definitely check it out. Cause it so is was... she vegan? She is like 100% she vegan? She is vegan. Okay, I don't think yeah, I do that. Yeah, that's kind of her her stitch. Like she does like different recipes uh-huh. and stuff, vegan style or whatever. And she gotcha. had the whole cooking show gotcha. too. I don't know oh, if they yeah. did vegan stuff on there, but yeah. I would assume so. If she's yeah. vegan, I would think so. Um, I saw a TikTok the other day. Girl, y'all, I've been on TikTok way too much. But anyway, <laughs> do you know that Tia Mori is two years older than tab tabitha just has no, such like an older she does like auntie vibe she seems much she older got a grown daughter yeah yeah 
She's like, Tia is two years older than her. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she does have a very auntie kind of vibe. She does. She truly and does. And Tia is more sisterly. Well, you know, we kind of grew up with them, so they're going to seem lo- younger to us anyway. Right. Literally. Yeah. yeah. Literally. Yeah. Wow. I did not know that. Tabitha is 43 and Tia is 44. So mm-hmm. Tia is a year older than her. A year and some change. Oh. Crazy. Mm-hmm. And Tabitha I mean, they still Aquarius, both aunties. Period. Yes. Tia is just like more like the young fun aunt that you yeah. like take to the club with you. Yeah. Because she exactly. like help you get in. Yeah. And Tab mm-hmm. is like the older aunt who like gives you like life advice and lets you yeah. borrow money when you like gonna be laying on your rent. <laughs> I have a vivid <laughs> imagination. <laughs> it's accurate though. <laughs> That is true. I, I mean, I guess since Tia and them, the, they were actors, so they probably mm-hmm. just had their children later in life. So that makes, you know, they have, mm-hmm. like, I think Tia's son is maybe like 10 or 11 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and then she has, a, yeah. her daughter's only like six or seven, something yeah. like that, pretty young too. Yeah. 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 So I think uh, Tab just had her kids a little bit sooner in life. Yeah. So that's why. But yeah, it's crazy. Okay, I'm definitely going to check out those snacks. Love support Tab. Did you get the little tea set? It looks so cute. No, it's, it was sold out everywhere Aww. by the time I got my hands on it. Um, yeah. Or it could go in the store. It Only reason so why I got the snacks is because I did a drive up thing. Mm. But I, drive up? I know. So worth it if y'all can get your hands on it. I hope they do like a little restock or whatever. But yeah, because I just came back from Target for we started here and nothing. Nothing. A wow. little tub of potato salad. I'm like, I'm not. Not a tub of potato salad. This small too. I, I mean, I'm sure it's good, but that's just a tease. With, if I ain't since got it's food, food, they're probably going to restock food for sure. Yeah. I can see them restocking food. Yeah. Or even just having a limited release kind of thing since it is food. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. That and with sense. it being vegan, they're probably was like, you know. Yeah. But everybody loves Tad. Like I, you know, if it was anybody else, I'm not picking up no vegan food, but it's Tad. Yeah. It's Tad, so, period. Yeah. Period. I love it. Yeah. Hey, I'm definitely gonna have to check it out. I hope I can find some, especially the okra. I'm definitely really interested in that. I've only, I've only had okra either within like gumbo or like fried okra. Those are how I pre- like my okra, either within some type of soup or fried. Fried okra is very yummy. So, does it still have the stem in it in the uh, gumbo, or is it is it like cut up in the gumbo? Uh, also, never had gumbo before, so that's I, a, you know. What a travesty of justice. <laughs> what a travesty. I want to say when I say I am true north strong. True north strong. <laughs> the north will rise. Um <laughs> Yeah, I think it's probably stimulus. I know when you get like fried gumbo or like fried okra, it's no stimulus, mm-hmm. like a little ball. So okay. Would, yeah, but yeah, it's really yummy. Um uh, yeah, I can't wait to like go to New Orleans with you one day so we can eat all the gumbo. I feel like Wild should go back to New Orleans. I know y'all been there. I know the girls gonna be mad if they do it, but I want to go to go Wild New Orleans so freaking yeah. bad, so bad. Yeah. So if not, we're just gonna have to plan a trip to New Orleans. Yeah. Maybe go to Essence Fest one year since that's what the grown ladies do, and we grown ladies. The aunties, you know? yeah. yeah. I bet Tad be there too. <laughs> she is. She one thousand percent will be there. Tia also probably. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. she down for the culture so she really is but yeah i don't think there's a you, you can't get better uh occasion food than in new orleans period so yeah we gotta, yeah let's plan the yes. trip yeah, yeah we totally have to i'm I'm always down to eat same <laughs> literally always down to eat Thanks. But yeah, definitely check that out, y'all, if y'all can find it in stores. And I am definitely going to keep a lookout for the restock because mm-hmm. those burgers were really good. Oh, that's so exciting. Really, really good. Shout out to Tab. Yeah, she I doing her thing. I love that. Um, have you watched any new shows or movies this week? I did start uh, Kaleidoscope. Okay. I only got um, what episode in and it was Yellow. Okay. I it down. I did not so remember what happened you- in yellow at all. Um give me a spoiler free spoiler? refresher. Uh she is that a spoiler? She ended up getting promoted 
in this okay. episode. Okay. Okay. Yep. I'm with you now. Yeah. Yep. That's okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Which that this episode was, I was like, oh. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, I can't, you can't really say much without spoiling you it. You can't. <laughs> but it is interesting. Um, I just started it late or during a weekday, so we didn't get to finish. So we have tomorrow off. So we'll probably be finishing it tonight but I'm in I love a good like mystery kind of thing like me too because I know it's gonna piss me off but it's a fun Mm -hmm. piss me off it's fun it's so fun yeah I think uh I'm so excited that you're that you are dialed in it's gonna be really really good and yeah just text me updates because I don't need to wait until the next episode to know how oh yeah that's true I can pretend like I don't I didn't already hear this you know as we record like what? I mean, we, that's what basically we deal with uh, Harry Potter. So that's fine. literally what we do. With Harry Potter. <laughs> it's fine. Exactly. But yeah, that has been very, very fun. And um, yeah, that's the only update other okay. than anime stuff. And I won't bore y'all with that. Period. Period. <laughs> that is valid. Um, so I have been watching this show called Traders on Peacock. It is so fun, um, and it has, like, a lot of, like, reality TV people that I love on there, so it has, like, people from, like, The Bachelor, people from Survivor, people from Big Brother, and then it has, like, regular people who've never been on before, and they're all playing this game. Uh, The best thing that I can compare it to is the game that we used to play Among Us, where there were... um, imposters but in this game there are three traders in the game and only the traders know who the other traders are and everybody else is trying to figure out who the traders are and every day the traders are taking somebody out but also the other people called the faithful they are voting each other off trying to find the traders so it's really really good it's literally just like among us first of all i feel like we need a material girls among us that, that has so happened. Good. That would be so good. <laughs> I love that um, game. And now I'm all in for this TV show because again, uh-huh. mystery. Yes. I love that. Yeah. They're like in this like mansion in like Scotland. Um, and the host is hilarious. He's an actor. I can't remember his name, but he's a mm-hmm. he's a really funny actor. And yeah, it is it's really, really good. So I'm trying to f- hurry up and finish it. Yes, Alan Cumming. Thank you, JB. JB just told me in the chat his name is Alan Cumming. Okay, on the um, spot. Period. Yes. Period. <laughs> Place no games. Um, but yeah, it's just such a fun show. And I'm trying to like race against the clock to hurry up and finish it before I see any spoilers because everybody that I follow on Twitter are like reality TV show people who watch reality TV and they've been talking about it and I'm just having to like hurry up and like scroll past or whatever because mm-hmm. I don't want to spoil this because all the episodes are out. But yeah, I'm really, really excited to see um, how it ends because at the end, the winners, I guess the last people, the people to last are able to win like up to like 250K that they're splitting. And if the traders stay in the game, the traders get the money. But if they get all the traders out the game, then they get the money. So, and nobody knows who the traders are. Very much so among us for sure. Literally, yeah. So they getting kicked out. Mm-hmm. into space just like okay yep. cool yeah and then you find out once you kick people out if they were a traitor or not and yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like among us yeah the it. little text that shows mm-hmm. like yeah, so and so was or whatever an yeah <laughs> it's literally just like that but yeah it's really uh, good i love it and it's nice to see like some familiar faces that kind of gets you a little bit more um, it got me a little bit more invested in it because I don't know if I would have thought to watch it um, otherwise had I not recognized some other reality TV show people. It's just weird seeing them all like in one place. Is um, New York on there? Girl, no, but if why they could get New York for the next season? Epic. She has to be literally on literally the queen of reality TV. Reality TV show, yes. Yeah. She has to be on everything. Period. So, oh, if girl, if they could get New York on there, you know, she would be so spicy. But yeah, they had somebody from like Below Deck, um, The Real Housewives, Barely Hills. Like, mm-hmm. so they've had some good people. They had some good people on there. But yeah, they need New York for next season. Everybody needs New York. Everybody uh, needs New York. Yeah. I kind of want to rewatch uh, Flavor of Love. <gasps> girl, yes. Should we do that? Should that be a podcast journey we go on? We could totally do that. 
we could totally do that because I truly think um, flavor of love is what really like ignited my like passion for reality television. Absolutely, truly, truly, absolutely. Yep, I'm literally down. a shit show. Mm-hmm. I, whoever came up with that, I hope you are pinned up in somebody's mansion right now because you deserve so all the coins. All the coins <laughs> because that was all good quality trash television. I love quality it. Quality trash. And then wow. we got New York out of it. So who is the queen? So many, so many gems of people mm-hmm. out of that. Like mm-hmm. oh, pumpkin. Oh my god. <laughs> pumpkin. Buck wild. <laughs> what pumpkin spinning on New York truly lives in my head rent free because I rent thought New York free. was about to murder her on television. She and she shouldn't have went to jail for it because she was and, perfectly valid in that. She innocent. She innocent. Like that yeah. is the ultimate disrespect. Like there's the nothing. The you might as well just kill me. Yep. Just because because you're gonna wish you did. Yeah. <laughs> literally. Anyway. Literally. <laughs> but yeah. Oh my god. I love traders. Let us know if y'all end up watching it. Please don't tell us any spoilers um, if you have already finished it. Um, But yeah, I love it. And you know what? Actually, you know, at the back of the Hobonichi Weeks, they have these pages where it's like called My 100. Have you seen that page where you can list out 100 or whatever? So I am going to use that page to list out 100 new movies that I'm going to try to watch in 2023. So I've already got three movies that are new to me that I've never seen before that I watched and put on my list so I'm really really excited to see and uh, yeah I'm really excited to see how this list turns out by the end of the year I need to figure out what I want to do because it definitely ain't books I feel like every time I try to google ideas it's only books like y'all Mm-mm. please that's the thing let us know what y'all uh 100 is I think yours should be movies as well new to you because honestly you're gonna have a way easier time than me because there's a lot of movies that you have not seen but the way my anxiety is set, <laughs> <laughs> this is a reason why and I've learned this in therapy why I tend to go to things I already have watched before mm-hmm. because I know what's going to happen and I don't have to worry about you know that's true and you know what I think over, yeah I think movies are better than tv shows because the stakes are a lot lower and you don't have to invest as much time yeah you know what I'm saying like you can watch a movie in an hour and a half two hours a tv show girl it'll take so long to watch a hundred brand new tv shows or tv shows that you've never seen because like how many seasons does that include is that every season or is it just the first season that's why I just stuck to new to me movies on my list yeah it would have to be some like rules and stipulations like nothing Uh over two seasons kind of Uh thing and that still would be a stretch depending on how long each season is right exactly exactly but yeah i'm excited so i've already watched i watched the menu on hbo max uh shout out to danny he told me i had to watch it and i did watch it um and then i watched was it good though Uh... oh sorry (laughs) did it wasn't it wasn't bad. It was not bad. It just wasn't for me. I just, it just, it was a little bit, I feel like it was a little too artsy. Like it kind of tried a little bit too hard to be the more. Video. Yeah. Is it thriller? Yes. Scary? It's kind of a thriller. And J-Bay, um, feel free to chime in and let us know um, your spoiler free thoughts on it. It just was kind of, I, I mean, don't know. It was, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I went to art school. So I, Yeah. <laughs> You loved it. It was very pointed at yes. like the critiques the whole time towards like conceptual art and like the thought behind it. Mm-hmm. So like it was funny to me. There we go. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's wait. Too, so I is think... it a comedy or is it more thriller? Uh, both. <laughs> yeah, I oh, can see both. both. I think okay. if you had to put it into one category, I think it would be more of a thriller than a mm-hmm. comedy. But it definitely has. Okay. A little bit of comedy to it um and i don't know okay. it just i feel like i'm not smart enough for it see jb got it because he's smart maybe it's I'm just not, not a smart, smart thing <laughs> it was it's just the art side <laughs> okay i mean I, i'll definitely try it out because it doesn't it's not bad yeah no it. it's okay. not bad it's a very interesting concept i can say that i've never seen uh this concept for a movie but i i felt like there were a lot of holes in the plot 
to me. Um, but yeah, it wasn't bad at all. I'm glad I watched it. It was an experience, truly. Okay, nothing I've like never seen before. Yeah, it was nothing like anything I've ever seen before. So, and then the main guy is the guy who plays Voldemort. So, and I was getting a lot of creepy Voldemort vibes. Like he's never reminded me of Voldemort more than in that movie. Okay, I'm in. So there we go. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch it. Wait, there where can go. I see it? You said HBO Max? HBO Max. Yeah, mm-hmm. that got me on the choke code. I can never get rid of that damn subscription. I can't either. Every Acid time I is think coming to... out tonight. Oh, yeah. And I'm definitely going to watch it. Yeah. I'm definitely going to watch that. So, yeah. So, The Menu was my first movie. Uh, the second movie is called Sick. That is on uh, Peacock. Um, and it is set in April of 2020. You know, the height Mm -hmm. of the pandemic and it has a lot to do with the pandemic so i'll just leave it at that but that is scary yes it's a thriller it's a thriller it's not like a supernatural type of thing but it's definitely like a murder type of situation yeah okay okay but i liked it i thought it was a very very interesting movie um and the last one was a ticket to paradise um which is that movie with uh, george clooney and julia roberts in it so that was just like a nice little fun Rom com, rom com, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm really excited to, to go on this movie journey and see what other movie. I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot of scary movies, but I just felt like it will be cool to like list out all the new movies that I watched this year and like at the end of the year be able to like look back and reflect on yeah. all the stuff that I watched. So, so yeah, how many on movies. average? Never mind, I do the math on my on my own. <laughs> but it's like, uh how many movies do you have to watch to get like, to 100? Grandma. Yeah. JB, can you do some math and let us know how many? It's like I think that would be a average. really out of my comfort zone kind of challenge because I'm just not like I like what I like and um, yeah. although I'm I'm very open to change and stuff, but you know, again, like I said, how my anxiety is set up with my entertainment. That's how I do. But mm-hmm. this would take me out because y'all know how long it took me to watch Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. To... you'd have <laughs> to ahead, watch baby. 30 movies <laughs> a month is it really that many <laughs> wait no i'm wrong i did it wrong sorry <laughs> i was like oh, oh why? Why? it ain't gonna that be that was wrong <laughs> okay how many do you it's have eight. to watch eight. It's eight. eight eight a month okay that's doable that's doable like two a week two yeah. a week yeah 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 there you yeah. go <laughs> that's doable and you can count in the new movies. Like, I'm definitely going to see, like, Guardians of the Galaxy. And, and Megan you know, and Little yeah, Mermaid. Spider-Man and stuff there like that. Yeah. yeah. Anything yeah. that you have not seen before. It doesn't even have to be a brand new movie, just a new-to-you movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's doable. I love it. I'm excited. I'll try. Yeah. And then we already got the list in the Backfire Planner, ready to go. That's right. The Hobonichi got us in the Choco. They really do. Shout out to Benichi. Sponsor us. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, something we wanted to quickly touch on was our girl, Jackie Aina, um, on TikTok. Uh, there was a little bit of controversy. I don't even know if I want to call it controversy, but there was a lot of um, dialogue. Yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of dialogue <laughs> uh, around this. Because basically... Jackie put out a TikTok and she was basically kind of talking about how, you know, people like to tell people that, you know, just because it's on social media doesn't mean it's true. People on social media lives aren't that perfect. They're only showing what's perfect about their life and blah, blah, blah. And Jackie made a TikTok and was basically like, I, you know, that could be true for some people, but that's not the case for everybody. She was like, mm-hmm. I don't feel like I'm just showing a highlight reel of my life. My life is just really good. And that's what I'm showing. That's kind of the gist of her initial video. Would you say, am I leaving anything Um, out? Yeah, I think her her point was saying that like what she shared is her truth. And because she doesn't choose to share like every aspect, like all the downs doesn't mean that she is fake. Doesn't mean it's fake. Yes, exactly, exactly. (laughs) Um, So then this other girl uh stitched Jackie's video and she was basically like what what's your understanding of the other girl's video because I was kind of lost I'm not gonna lie because she just didn't make a lot of sense to me 
She did. And basically her take was that, you know, if you don't share the downs, you aren't being authentic. Uh-huh. Like everybody isn't just always steaming their sheets every single day, which and people want to see. And that. people want to see yeah. like the down parts of your life. For one, I believe Jackie steams her sheets every other day. I think there's I another don't... video that you sent um that kind of like agree with that. Like, yeah, maybe she doesn't hop right out of bed every single day. Maybe she sleeps in uh-huh. and then steam her sheets or you know, maybe she goes and do other things and then steam her sheets or whatever. But uh-huh. That doesn't mean she's being fake mm-hmm. just because she just only showed you the steam sheet part of the right. day. So, right. yeah, yeah. The I, I think honestly, the girl original take was not bad. It was right. just you know more of a agree to disagree kind of situation. That where she went wrong is basically talking about Jackie as far as like her looks and you know stuff a, like that. A lot of people in the girls' yeah. comments took this as a took this situation as an opportunity to criticize Jackie in a lot of ways that had nothing to do with either one of the videos. Mm -hmm. And the girl whose video was like basically went along with it was laughing in the comments and, you know, making fun of Jackie too, which was really unfair. So Jackie ended up making like a follow-up video kind of addressing that and saying that she removed her as a follower because it's like, if my content triggers you so much or makes you feel this way about me, then why do you want to follow me? Also, I love that about TikTok. You can see, like, if you go in the comments and mm-hmm. see if they're following you, mm-hmm. love that. Get out. <laughs> yeah. Because why are you sitting here talking crap about me and following me? That just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. The and people so of course, she was kiki in with her was following it, too, like, which is exactly. really, really weird. Exactly. But of course, yeah. the girl, the original girl ended up, like, backtracking, and I think she even deleted her video that had mm-hmm. comments, and she did acknowledge that she was wrong for kiki in, um in the comments yeah. or whatever, but I just kind of wanted to bring up this situation because, um, I mean, obviously... I think the original criticism can be true. Like there are some people who go out of their way to make their life seem perfect on social media. And, but I feel like however people want to edit or show their life, everybody on social media should have the understanding that just because something appears to be perfect does not mean it is. And people don't have Mm -hmm. to show us every bad thing that they go through in order for us to understand that everybody goes through bad things. Like who doesn't have that understanding? Like, I don't find people more relatable because they just show me more of the bad things that they go through. Cause I already know that people go through bad things. It's like, I don't need everybody I follow to be personally relatable to me. Like for me, like Jackie is relatable to me because she's a black woman. She doesn't mm-hmm. have to be any more relatable to me that we don't have to have similar, you know, lifestyles or spending habits or anything else like that for me to be able to relate to her in some way you know what I'm saying yeah yeah and honestly I love seeing black women in different spheres and different aspects of life like Mm -hmm. yeah Jackie's life is not going to be my life but it's nice to see other black women can live in that way Mm -hmm. um and you know there's other creators out there that like feels that like kind of like being able to see that representation in a certain sphere kind of thing Mm -hmm. but I get that we are not everybody, but this is a situation where we have to be adults. And if what she's doing on her platform is bothering you, mm-hmm. you need not to follow her. Yep. And I mean, it's that simple. Like, why do why do people have to express that they are going through shit in order for you to believe that they're going through shit? Like, we all are going through shit. That's yeah. like me. Like, it's the whole like, uh, if the tree fall in the woods, did it make a sound because you didn't hear it? Like, you know, you know. What yeah, I mean? like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I, it still makes a sound just because yes. I didn't hear it. Does you know doesn't neglect right. that fact? But I, I, specifically with TikTok is what I've noticed. It seems like a lot of them are with this whole authenticity kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They want to see like when you are boohoo crying, they want you to pull out that phone and throw that up. Yeah, like they want to see that quote unquote realness. But in reality, I feel like there's a way for you to still be yourself and come as you are without airing out everything in real time. Yeah. And I feel like you should come to things if you want to, too. Like I could be okay with something that happened in my life and decide not to ever share it. Exactly. So yeah. like, that's the aspect of it too, but it's like the way the, the lawyer girl or the response girl, whatever was coming at is like, 
since she doesn't share that she can't possibly be real and that's like those things can't aren't true maybe Maybe, her content is just not for you exactly or maybe there are creators who want to relate to you in a way that's not trauma bonding is that not possible as well like some people don't want to relate to their audience in that way um Mm -hmm. because they just don't want to they might not be comfortable doing it it might be things they're not healed from or that's just not the type of content that they make there are some creators out there whose content is trauma the traumatic things that they have gone through and they are comfortable making content off of that. Everybody is just not the same. And that doesn't mean that their life is not real or that they're showing you only the fake, most beautiful aspects of their life. They're, at the end of the day, everybody is sharing what they want to share. Some people just don't want to share everything that everybody else want to share. And I think that it's healthy and it's okay. And honestly, some people's content, I like being kind of like an escapism. Like if I'm going yeah. through something different or bad or negative in my life, sometimes I want to be able to just watch Jackie steam her sheets. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. It's just simple. I, I don't understand. I mean, maybe it's a situation because social media is so readily accessible to the average everyday person. Cause I don't think Daniel Radcliffe is running through walls to get to Hogwarts like that Uh that's just not a reality (laughs) right right maybe because that is like a a movie or a book thing and social media is like literally anybody with a phone and internet access can create so Mm -hmm. maybe people think that it has to be yeah 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 but it it's also we have to be adults on these platforms and know that obviously like Jackie has a big ass house. I have a house mm-hmm. nowhere near as big as her. And Regular. shit go wrong in this motherfucking house every single day. Mm-hmm. But I don't have to, you know, share that. And I don't have to hear right. that Jackie is going through things in her house in order for me to believe that. Like, I, I don't need to see that. Right. But it just comes down to like, instead of forcing people to make the content you want to see, go find somebody else who's making that. Mm-hmm. you know or if you mm-hmm. don't see it make it yourself make it like yourself. you can't just yep. ask people to do what you want to see on their platform right exactly exactly and you know what honestly after all this discourse I have kind of noticed a small shift in Jackie's content so um oh she I, talked about that in her little stories too but go oh ahead, she go did ahead. okay because yeah. okay. I kind of noticed like after all this happened the past couple of days she's kind of been doing more tiktok stories and kind of showing more of just like the normal goofy silly stuff that she does like in her day things that aren't just like super curated and perfect you know what i'm saying so i feel like maybe she did kind of take the criticism to heart just a little bit and she was like you know what i could show a little bit more of myself without getting all in my business and showing everything that I'm worried Mm -hmm. about. I want people, I don't want people to see me as one dimensional. Maybe she kind of thought that maybe she wants people to see more other sides to her, which if that's what comes out of this situation, I'm all for it. I'm never going to want to see less of Jackie. I always want to see more because I just, I think she's great or whatever. But um, yeah, as long as it's obviously is what she's doing and she's not, I don't think she's just responding to somebody else's criticism. I think maybe she, maybe she's getting to the point to where she does want to share just a little bit more sides of her and not just the you know the pretty perfect presentation that we all kind of got used to yeah for sure uh I think she had mentioned like she had been a lot opening back in the day because y'all know I mean y'all Jackie Ina fans she been she been at this for a while Mm -hmm. um so she said she did open up a little bit and maybe open up too much and that's kind of where she kind of fall back and a lot of stuff is a little bit more curated so maybe she is like having a little shift that I can have different like aspects of myself out there right. to show a little bit more of me without all y'all being in my business. In my business. Because so, here's the yeah. thing, people beg to see all of your life. And as soon as you show them, they're criticizing you and they're being really literally what she said. Yeah. You. Yeah. So it's like, you just want to see more people just so you can have more shit that you can talk about. Like Jackie don't give you a lot of shit that you can say about her yeah. besides <laughs> judging that she themes her sheets. And I think that's where people get upset because they want mm-hmm. they juicier want more stuff to, criticize, to talk about. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like, no, yeah. no, this is all you got. My house is immaculate. <laughs> and I steam my sheets. <laughs> it's all you got. Uh, 
I think she she'll find her perfect balance. Um, I like you said, I do see a little bit more of her coming out. Uh-huh. Um, and maybe me being a fan for her for like years at this point, I have a little bit of privilege of actually like knowing a little bit more of her uh-huh. than say the TikTok world where she's just now getting on there, and maybe uh-huh. those people don't really know her background. Right. But um, but yeah, she'll have to find a balance, and that's what every creator you have to find yep. a balance that's best for you because everybody don't need to be in your business in order for you to be real and that's how they want and that's how they want yeah. Ew, they need yeah. to get some, get some business it's yours they want your business right <laughs> they try to get your business they try to get your your business exactly <laughs> exactly uh okay last thing we want to do before we wrap up the show is a planner draft and honestly jba if you want to take part in this i think it could be really fun and we want you guys to chime in comment on this episode on instagram or uh write us on spotify um and let us know if you can only pick one planner one specific pen one sticker shop and one accessory what would you choose so let's go ahead and start um with us Myra what would be I think I know what your one planner would be what would be your one planner it has to be a paper planner no it doesn't it does not it will have to be notion dude okay wow okay you, you surprised me you told yeah me you thought it was gonna me. be that daily duo huh no I thought she was gonna pick the hope in each weeks really mm-hmm. nah I can't I ain't too far deep in the uh, cult that just yet I just got my membership <laughs> card <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. She just got it. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But okay. yeah, it would have to be no shit for me. Okay. So versatile. My, yes, that's true. That totally makes sense. So now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, you are a notion gal. <laughs> um, for me, obviously, it would be my hope in each weeks. This is the planner that I cannot live without right now. I love it. I need it. Bury me with my hope in each weeks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my question, would you ever get a mega? um we'll see possibly maybe next year because I don't I just don't have a need for one right now I did get one I kind of tested it out I just don't have a need for it right now oh but, you already have one yeah yeah oh never mind well, yeah. yeah you know y'all, like, we I just got my membership card clearly we went a little crazy by that <laughs> week it's fine <laughs> but yeah maybe maybe next year um Jamie do you have your one planner that you cannot live without um I've been in a daily duo I mean I don't know that I would say it's like my die or like ride or die plan okay. but like I love a good notebook I love it and sticky notes so. period <laughs> okay so your so would your accessory be sticky notes oh yes definitely okay. oh wow yeah. I answered that one I was like what am I gonna yep. say for that that's it. you got it <laughs> <laughs> you <did. laughs> Without even thinking about it. Okay, so Myra, what would be your one specific pen? Well, I guess I no, we'll go to the accessory next since they did accessory. Accessory. Next. Okay. Um washi tape. Mm, mm. Washi yeah. tape. And I, I'm taking all of it. My whole washi Simply tape. Gilly collection. I can't just pick one. Period. Yeah. Period. Uh I think my one accessory would have to be. Just all the stickers. If I can't have washi tape, then it would have to be stickers. Stickers are my second, like sticker kits specifically. Because even hoping each week. You are a kid girl. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. a kid girl. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> sticker kits. I love it. Um, uh, okay. So J Babe, what will be your pen? Um, the pilot precise V5 retractable pen. Period. Okay. <laughs> the exact pen. <laughs> the exact pen. <laughs> I had to pull it off. I wanted to make sure like the girls knew. <laughs> I love it. I love Spot it. Oy. Yes, Myra, what will be your one pen? Um, so I have the specific, I have this zebra sasura mark on, specifically the 0.5 one. Okay, okay. Um, love it. This is a new to me pen, but uh, it trumps every other pen that I have, honestly. It's the Period. best. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, my pen will be this Sailor Moon pen that I got from Tokyo Pen Shop. It is a pilot something. It's like Pilot High Tech C Coletto point four. I don't know, but is it gel pen? Yes, of course. Girl, okay, don't yeah. insult <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I love this pen because it's like it's literally like four pens in one because I got like four different colors in it and I use it all the time yeah. in my opening two weeks. I love it. So um, I know, how's your uh, fountain pen working for you? 
You know, I actually haven't been using it a lot lately. I okay. still like it, but it's just not what I go to with my Hobonichi weeks because I just don't have the patience. To, like this pen dries like instantly. So as I write yeah, on this paper, the mark on, yeah. I'm too concerned about smudging in my Hobonichi weeks. And if I smudge, I'm going to have to buy a whole new planner. So yes. Yeah. Facts. I, I don't Valid. have time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just curious. I love it. Uh, okay. Last one. JB, if you had to pick one sticker shop, the only sticker shop you could ever shop from ever again. Oh no, I can't answer this one. <laughs> I'm not a sticker person anymore. <laughs> so I never be, was. This will be nothing for you. You'll be all right yeah. living without stickers. Yeah. Okay. I got you. I got you. Myra, what about you? Do you have a sticker shop? Oh my God. Hold on. Yeah. I thought, I thought JB was going to take longer. Let me oh, look at what I <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Let me look at what I bought recently. Um I'll I, go ahead and answer. I'll go, go ahead, ahead and yeah. figure it out. Um mine right now would be uh the styleplanner.com because they have the cutest Hobonichi weeks uh kits. I absolutely love their kits. It's so hard to choose because so many good shops have good kits, but I am obsessed with their Hobonichi weeks kits right now. So I would have to go with them. But this could change tomorrow. Literally. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking like right now in the season I'm in, I really love transparent stickers. Mm. Um, so I'm going to have to go with high paper clouds. Nice. I no. love them. See Amy Draw. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I love see Amy Draw too. I have yeah. got some of her stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a tie between those two for sure. Because they it. do have the best like with their transparent stuff. It's so good. Yep, yeah, I love it. Oh, you know what? Mine, mine will be a tie between the Style Planner and Coffee Monsters Co. I can't believe I forgot Coffee Monsters Co. right now, but I love it. They have really good Hope and Each Week's kits too. I just love it. So cute. So cute. They do. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, guys, love in. let us know your planner draft. One planner, one specific pen, one sticker shop, and one accessory. Cannot wait to see what y'all say. And y'all are always giving us great ideas for other shops that we can shop at. So y'all might turn us on to some new to us shops as well. So absolutely. Yes. Let us yeah. know. Let us know. But yeah, guys, that is our episode for this week. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Shout out to our pod producer, J-Bay. We are so excited and uh, lucky to have you. And it was so cool having you in yes. the building with us recording today. Love it. Yes. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Love it. <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, we will talk to y'all next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>